And that's an easy way for you to not only utilize space for you and your family to live in, but also then eventually as you grow out of the home, turn it into an investment property. Welcome back to another episode of Finance with Fernando. I am your host, Fernando DeCunha, aka The Mortgage Maverick. Follow me on Instagram at Mortgage Maverick or via Facebook at Real Mortgage Maverick. Today I have a treat. I'm actually revisiting a topic that I spoke of back two years ago. What is the difference between renting versus buying? Now the reason why I'm redoing this topic is because we're in a completely different market. Now you can almost say that every year we're in a different market, but now we're in a significant seller's market. And I wanted to go over what the pros of renting versus buying is. Now, if you've been listening to this podcast or watching my YouTube, you most likely are already aware that I work in real estate finance. So I provide mortgages for clients that are buying homes. Uh, I try to educate in the sense where I'm not necessarily biased telling you as a listener to just buy a home because that's not necessarily the case for everyone. Everyone's different. Sometimes it makes more sense to rent a home and I'll go through those reasons as opposed to buying. So why don't we hop into it? First, I'm going to touch base on the benefits of owning. Okay, so when you own a property, there are a few different benefits, and we'll start off with building wealth. Some of the wealthiest people in the world own real estate. Um, They're either investors, they purchase a property that then appreciated and sold. And I'll give you a prime example. One of my clients purchased a property in Manhattan um, not too long ago, probably within the past decade, the real estate boom took off. They sold that property for a profit of multiple millions of dollars, literally taking them from, you know, maybe a few hundred thousand in wealth to multi millions. So owning real estate, what I always explain to clients is essentially creating wealth in the future because you're hoping that your home is an appreciating asset. Okay, so that's the first pro of owning. Um, another benefit is tax deductions. So if you own your primary residence, you obviously have to work with your state and federal tax guidelines, right? On what you could write off and depending on how much income you make, uh, that may not be an option. Always consult with a certified professional accountant um, and don't necessarily take my word for it, but you may be in line for some deductions. Now, this is definitely a uh, benefit if you own multiple investment properties. So like myself and my wife, as I've mentioned in the past, own investment properties. We have the ability to depreciate those properties, maybe write off some uh, losses that we've had in repairing the homes or renovating the homes. And that's something that you could take advantage of to offset your income. Also be aware when you do that, and this is just my uh, mortgage maverick disclosure here, if you write off your income, you may not have the ability to uh, show the uh, repayment of a loan. So be aware, the more you write off your income, the higher your debt to income ratio will be, okay? Don't forget that, and I've talked about that in various topics in uh, other episodes. The next thing is creative control. Now, what do I mean by creative control? When you own your own space, you have the ability to make the space your own. You wanna paint the walls, you can paint the walls. You wanna redo the kitchen, you can redo the kitchen. You wanna knock out a wall and have an open space concept, you could do that, it's your own space. Now that's mainly for single family homes and multifamilies. You could do this with condominiums and co-ops, which are also known as apartments, but you have to make sure that you actually work with the management company and the co-op board to get approval to do this stuff. Keep in mind your local legislature will actually require that you potentially get permits and maybe even modify their certificate of occupancy if you make any modifications to your residence. Uh, But still, the fact that you have that creative control and it's basically your own muse it's really a nice, uh, it's a nice way to you know, make your house a home. So creative control is important. And lastly, the, uh, one of the pros of owning a home, and most people don't think of this, but it's an easy entry to becoming a landlord. So my story is quite simple. My first home I purchased right out of college. I was in my early to mid 20s. And I lived at that home for about four years, then converted it to my first investment property. Now, the reason why I bring up entry to landlord is because a lot of clients reach out to me looking to become an investment property owner without even owning real estate for themselves. And that's an easy way for you to not only utilize space for you and your family to live in, but also then eventually as you grow out of the home, turn it into an investment property. It is probably the easiest way to become a landlord 
without going through what I have to go through now, owning multiple investment properties with significant down payments and more rigorous guidelines when you're trying to finance a home. So those are some of the pros as far as home ownership. Let's look at actually renting a property. So when you're renting, there's various uh, attractiveness to it. We'll start off with the fact that you're living without a commitment to real estate. Um, I know that kind of sounds open-ended, but it's it, it's actually a positive. You know, you don't have to commit to, you know, um, owning a property. You don't have to get a home loan. You don't have uh, necessarily an obligation outside of rent as far as expenses are concerned. You obviously have your living expenses as far as cable or electric or water, you know, those types of bills, but you would have that if you own a home as well. You just don't have that commitment that you have to then sell the property if you want to move. You could just move. You know, so renting does have that big advantage in that sense. Uh, that also kind of bleeds into the second positive where let's say you have a career that you want to switch gears and maybe move to a different state. That's happening a lot with COVID, right? And that's why I'm redoing this rent versus buy. I have a lot of my clients that are working remote. Some of them in positions in which they weren't remote before. They would actually have to go into the office, but now their companies have complete, uh, completed a full remote transfer and they don't even have to be in the office. A lot of them are moving from where I'm located in New York to various states as far as the Carolinas, out west, Florida, you know, just so their their ability to enjoy their daily living is is achieved, you know? So that the fact that you could actually switch gears in your career and move um, renting allows you to do that because then you don't have to worry about once again selling a home, okay, or what you're going to do with that asset. Uh, the third thing is actually building credit. So this is quite this is quite popular for a lot of clients that are preparing for home ownership, where they rent and uh, they're they're actually able to build credit while they're awaiting their application to uh, get pre-approved or purchase a property. Now, renting itself doesn't necessarily build credit because your landlord isn't going to report to the credit bureaus uh, your on-time payments. There are different ways to actually record utility payments um, called self-reporting utility payments to your credit bureaus, and that will improve your credit. That's something that we'll talk about in a different topic. Um, but the fact is, is that if you need to repair your credit while you're renting, you could do that because you know maybe you're uh, eligible to get a home loan now, but if you repair your credit, maybe you get a better rate. Maybe you get more attractive financing. You know, maybe you could afford more of a home. You know, so renting allows you to take time to then build your credit to achieve uh, greater success in the future. Uh, the next thing is low maintenance. So one of the positives about renting is you have low maintenance costs. So I could tell you just by um, you know being someone who owns multiple properties. You're, you're always concerned about if something breaks, if something needs to be replaced. You know, I just had a couple tenants move out of one of my properties and the, the washing machine for clothes, uh, it functions, but it happens to tear clothes every once in a while. Does it need to be replaced? Not necessarily. Am I going to replace it? Yes, because I don't want my tenants to ruin their laundry and potentially have clothing stuck in the machine and then I have to get an appliance guy or I have to go there at some point and free up the machine. So, you know, there's sometimes you're replacing items at homes that it's more for convenience as opposed to necessity. So if you're, if you're a renter, you don't have to worry about that, right? It's not your appliance. You just use it when your, your term, your, you know, your lease term is over, you move out and whatever the landlord does with the machine, that's their prerogative, you know? So Low maintenance is definitely on the list of pros if you're a renter, that's for sure. Um, and the second to last thing is the fact that it may be budget friendly. Now this, this is a little unique of a topic now because we're in a market in which rental rates and the amounts of rent uh, is almost the same or even higher than if you own property. Um, and that's typically not the case. You could usually find you know, a, uh, a one bedroom or a studio at a significantly lower price than if you're renting a home. You know, um, in certain areas now, due to COVID, location is a huge amenity. So what that means is, is that if you're renting a one bedroom apartment on someone's property, you know, like let's say a separate structure or even a basement of someone's home, you used to be able to get a rather large discount on rent by doing that. Um, now that's not necessarily always the case. Rental rates have increased dramatically because a lot of the 
individuals, specifically here in New York, just across, you know, similar to across the nation, you know, they're moving away from the city living and into having that suburban feel. And landlords are taking advantage of that. You know, if you're close to different amenities, if you could hop on the train and be in the city in an hour, or there's a pool at the property, or there's a park nearby, or it's close to shopping, or a bike path, or something like that, the rent the rent rolls are going to be higher, um, you know, in, in most situations. But if you can take some sacrifice in renting and actually find something that may not be the best space, and I'm not saying you have to accept cock cockroaches or anything like that, but you know, if you rent a space in which you're not, you know, next to a pool or you know, next to some type of leisurely activity, you may be able to find some cheaper rent, you know, than what you would pay if you own the home. So that's a good thing. It's also because home prices have been significantly higher since COVID started as well, depending on the location of the property. So rent typically is lower than what you would be paying as far as a mortgage payment. Um, and the last thing is exactly what I just mentioned, the cost to buy. So I talk about this in some other topics. Definitely check this out, what the cash to close will be when you purchase a home. Now, I just had a client earlier this morning actually come to me and say, well, I know I, I needed X amount of dollars to buy the property, but you know, you're advising I need a little more than that. What's that extra? I thought it was just my down payment. And the thing is, is that not only will you need your down payment, whatever you're putting down, 3%, 5%, 20%, whatever that may be, you have to also allocate some assets towards closing costs, You know, paying for your attorney, your appraiser, your title fees, stuff like that, as well as any taxes and homeowner's insurance that will be due at closing. So there definitely needs to be a cushion, and depending on what state you're in, those the, that cushion amount will be different. You know, taxes are less, closing costs are less, depending on what state you're located in. It. So if you're watching this or listening to this, and you have questions on what do you believe the extra above the down payment will be, and you want to ask me that, shoot me a DM. Um, and what I'll do is, is I'll kind of cater to wherever you're located. I am licensed in 48 states. I've done loans in probably about two thirds or more of them. Um, so I will tell you that New York and California are the most expensive states to buy real estate, um, as well as sell real estate or own real estate. But um, I could kind of give you a more accurate approximation of what you'll be out of pocket. Okay. Hopefully you found this video and podcast episode, if you're listening, thank you as a follower, uh, helpful for your endeavor of whether you're going to choose to rent or buy in 2021. Um, hopefully this market will turn a little bit and make it more favorable to own as inventory increases. Um, I, I, I'm here to help you finance your first, next, and last home. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please share. I'll catch you on the next one.